verse 20. But she said to them, Do not call me Naomi. Call me Mara, for the Almighty has dealt very bitterly with me. Let's read it once again, all of us together. Chapter 1 of the book of Ruth, verse 20. But she said to them, Do not call me Naomi, call me Mara, for the Almighty has dealt very bitterly with me. Now look at verse 21. Verse 21 says, I went out full, and the Lord has brought me home again empty. Why do you call me Naomi? Since the Lord has testified against me, and the Almighty has afflicted me. The name of Naomi means pleasant. It means pleasant. Sweet, happy, but when she comes back, and let's see where she comes back from. She comes back from Moab. She was not from Moab. She was from Bethlehem. Bethlehem signifies or means the house of bread. She lived in the house of bread. But a famine came to Bethlehem and her husband and her together with her two sons went out from bethlehem and they go to moab moab were fields that belonged to the philistines it was an enemy place it was a people that were enemies of the people of god the moabites were the descendants of an incestuous relationship moab means the toilet bowl so from being in the house of bread look at the contrast naomi was in the house of bread the house of abundance and looking for the american dream or no 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 the mo the moab dream she was looking for the moab dream because there was life she could own a home there she could have, I don't know, how many things or belongings. Let's make this or bring it to our actual time. Maybe we, because we are looking for our material things, we begin to neglect our spiritual life. Searching after the car, the house, the comforts, and we are in spiritual abundance. But all of a sudden, we say, I need to have more. And But they told me over there in Sodom, over there in Hollywood, over there in that place where there's so much sin, but there's so much business. And I know it's going to go well for me, and I'm going to go look for the comfort and the advancement, and I go look for the home, the car, and we can possibly leave the place where we can maybe be going through lack. But we have what's most important, which is the spiritual bread. So Naomi had that spiritual bread. She was in the land of Israel. She was in the land where the true living God was worshipped. She was in the land where she lived to the customs according to the will of God. But there began to lack food. There where they were, and they went to Moab. Now in Moab, she becomes a widow. Her husband dies. Then her two sons die. Being left alone with her two daughter-in-laws. One of her daughter-in-laws leaves her. And she stays with Ruth only. And so she goes back together with Ruth. Back to Bethlehem. And when the neighbors and the friends and the relatives see her and they say, that is Naomi right there. This is, there is the pleasant one. That is the happy woman. That is the woman that is filled with joy. Maybe she had a real good character. She was happy and jovial. And they said, 
Maybe they said, "Oh, this is the one who encourages us, the woman of enthusiasm, the woman who、um, makes us happy because she has a contagious happiness." But she says, "Don't call me Naomi. Don't call me happy. Don't call me pleasant any longer. Don't call me the happy woman. Don't call me the woman with contentment. Call me Mara, bitter." Mara means bitterness. Call me bitter, because I left with my hands full. How could that be if there was lack? Why does she say I left with my hands full? And she says, "Now I come empty-handed." Did she not leave looking for something better? Did she not leave because there was lack in Bethlehem? She understood. She came to the understanding that what fills our hands is not material things. What fills our lives is not the car, the house, the money, the bank account, the the clothing. That's not what fills our hands. What fills our hands is the blessing of God. Hallelujah! To be in His house, worshiping Him. I left with my hands full, and I come with my hands empty. She came empty in bitterness. She lost her husband. She lost her children. She lost everything she had gotten a hold of in Moab. In Moab, we cannot get anything good. The city of Moab is a type of depravity of sin. Sin is always going to. Rip us off. It's always going to leave us in misery and bankruptcy because sin separates us from God. And with God, we have everything. It, with God, we're full. With God, with the Lord Jesus, we have everything. We do not need to go seeking where there is not what our soul needs. The only thing our soul needs is to be filled with the presence of God. With His presence, we are filled. We don't need anything else. Everything else will be added to us. He adds to us. And the good thing about this story of Mara, as she said, as she called herself, but God never ever called her bitter. In spite of the fact that she said, "Do not call me Naomi. Call me Mara." In all of the chap four chapters of the book of Ruth, you are going to find that God never called her Mara. Why do the sufferings come to our lives? Why does pain come to our lives? Not one of us can escape the pain. We would love to escape from the pain. We would love for our life to always be gladness, happiness. We would like for us to never have to cry. Uh, that we would never have to feel that pain in the heart. We would like for all of our days, all of our whole life, to be pleasant, right? Is that not true? But God allows, God allows that pain. And there is the illustration of the pearl, so that the pearl can be formed. The oyster receives inside of it a little grain of sand, goes into that oyster, and that is it. And it's this little insignificant little grain of sand, but it is sufficient to cause pain to that oyster, and it bothers the oyster. That little grain of sand. It, it bothers the oyster because it shouldn't be in there. The inside of that oyster is very sensible or very sensitive, and so that little grain of sand produces it pain. But that pain causes the oyster to form a substance called. It's it's a substance that covers. The sand, so that it will not cause it pain. So it gets covered, and covered in that substance, substance, until it forms a pearl, and it's called nacre. So that nacre surrounds and surrounds layer by layer, and so 
That is what the Lord wants to do. He wants to develop and make us into precious jewels. That is the reason why we go through brokenness, through pain, so that our character will become like Christ's character. Because when we are in pain, in brokenness, is when we humble ourselves. It bothers us, that little grain of sand, and then we begin to look for God, just like that oyster, and the Holy Spirit begins to put that knacker, that oil into our lives. He begins to soften our character, to soften the rough areas in our life. Hallelujah. Why? Because there's pain, there's suffering, so we begin to look for God. That's when we remember that there is a God. Is it not true that when something hurts us, we remember God? The one who never thinks about God. The day he has pain, she has pain, they think about God. And so God begins to sand down those rough edges in our lives and soften us. And when that process is done, he finds that he has made a beautiful jewel that he can uh, shine in his kingdom and that is you and that is why James 1 2 says rejoice when you find yourself in many it says have joy when you find yourselves in many trials and many testings but what do we do we come like Naomi they say God bless you and we're like grr brother sister may God bless you so much how beautiful that I see you mm. Don't call me that. I'm in bitterness. <laughs> this day has nothing good in it. My life has nothing good in it. Only suffering. There's nothing good inside of me. Only pain. Why does everybody else l live in pleasantness? Why is everybody else's Naomi? But I am in bitterness. But God is working in your life, beloved. That is why we should give thanks to God when we find ourselves in different trials and testings. We should tell him thank you because just like that oyster, it is time to begin to cover that little grain of sand that hurts us, that bothers us with the anointing of the Holy Spirit so that my life can be transformed. But what do we do? We complain. That is so ugly. And we need to hear ourselves. You know, because people can hear you, but we don't hear ourselves many times. We look so ugly in the eyes of God and in the eyes of others as well. When we do nothing but complaining, complaining, complaining. Let's take advantage of the pain and suffering so that pearl can be formed inside of our hearts. And that our hearts will be changed so that our heart will be purified and it will stop being that heart of a rock and that it will be transformed into a heart of flesh. And that can only happen when we take advantage of the pain. When we take profit out of the pain. When we take profit out of what bothers us. The oyster takes advantage. It fills that grain of sand and it begins to secrete that nacre. Well, you feel pain? Start praying harder and harder. Stop, start fasting. And the more you fast, the more you pray, the Lord begins to form that beauty inside of us. He wants to form that beautiful inside of us. He wants us to develop His character. Do you know how the Lord developed his character which was full of meekness and humility it says because of what he suffered because of what he went through because of the pain he went through he became who the one we are seeking to be like and so we have two options we're going to go through the pain whether we want to or not we are humans and we have two options here Either a jewel is formed in my inside or I end up in bitterness 
criticizing, being envious because other people are happy and they don't have problems. Um, because there are people who get mad when the other one is smiling. Hello? There will be bitter people that when you smile, they're going to get mad. There will be bitter people that when you are filled with your hands of blessing, they're going to get mad because they have nothing. And so we have that option of being Naomi, the pleasant one, or being Mara, the bitter one. We have that option. We can decide. Naomi, she herself said, don't call me Naomi. I have no gladness. I have no joy. I have nothing pleasant. Call me Mara with all of these problems that I have. But the Lord never called her Mara. The Lord had a plan for her. God had allowed everything that she suffered for a purpose. She instructed Ruth. So instead of complaining so much, we would be speaking about the word of the Lord more. How many Ruths would we have next to us? But bitterness, it, it detracts people from us. Do you know that bitterness and complaining gets people to run away from us? Who wants to be next to a complainer? So instead of complaining... We'd be speaking about the Lord Jesus. How many Ruths would be here? Ruth was the comfort of Naomi. How many people we would have that when we're going through something, they'd be praying for us. And so look at everything we lose when we complain. Instead of bringing people close to us, we drive them away because of our complaining, because all of that bitterness that comes out of our mouth. James says that from the same fountain, water that is sweet and water that is bitter cannot come out at the same time. It is impossible. We can talk very sweetly here, but if we get home and we begin to speak bitterly, it means that the sweetness we spoke here was not genuine because what's in our hearts is bitterness. And God wants to deliver us from that bitterness, but that bitterness that it takes away the joy. It doesn't allow us to receive the blessing of God. It does not allow us to see the purpose that God has for our lives. He has purposes. Through Ruth, His son, o, her son Obed was born. And from Obed, um, Jesse was born. And from Jesse, King David was born. And through King David, Jesus Christ came. Look at the purpose that God had in the life of Naomi. To connect Ruth with Boaz, the one whom she married, from her people, God wants to use you in all of the circumstances of your life to connect people that are not of the people of God, to connect them with them. But we're not going to connect people in our bitterness. People are not going to want to know anything about the gospel. They say, with that face you carry, forget it. <laughs> I'm having a better time over here. That's what they're going to say. Yes, the purpose of Naomi, the only purpose of Naomi was to connect Ruth with Boaz. And that is how the descendancy of Jesus Christ came and all of the holy people of God came. And so it was very profitable. Much fruit came through a woman who understood the purpose of God, through a woman who understood that everything works for good, that even the testings, the pains, the suffering have a purpose. The purpose is to connect people who are not people of God so that they will become people of God. But as I repeat to you, that people is not going to be connected. Those people that are not of God are not going to come to the feet of Christ if we do not take advantage of the circumstances to seek God. People are astonished and they are amazed when they see somebody who is suffering and they're glorifying God. They ask, how could they do it? How could they handle the pain? How could they handle the lack? How could they handle the problems? There's always joy in them. I want that joy because they are desperate looking for that help. They do not know. When the problems come, 
they don't know where to take refuge. They take refuge in alcohol and drugs and suicide and they end up in death because they do not know how to deal with suffering. But you, the people of God, we know how to take advantage of the pain, of the suffering, of the sadness and glorify the Lord Jesus Christ at all times. And if we act like that, we will always be pleasant in the eyes of God, happy. And what more joy than to have Him with us? That is the greatest joy. The problem here is that we base our joy on the things that are seen. But our joy, our happiness is not in what we see. It is in what we don't see in the Lord Jesus Christ, in the spiritual things. With Him, we have our hands full. But without Him, we are empty. Do not call me Naomi. Call me Mara. What do you want to be called? Naomi or Mara? What is your decision? How do you want to be called? Naomi, the pleasant one? But you're going to be pleasant with a, a smile from ear to ear at all times. Under any circumstances. When you're sick, I stay pleasant. When there's lack, I stay pleasant. When there are problems, when they criticize you, you stay pleasant. Amen? And then... You will have many roots and the Lord is going to glorify himself. Do we want spiritual growth on a personal level? Let your name not be changed. Let it stay Naomi. Maintain yourself in the house of bread. You have nothing to do in Moab. Maintain yourself in the house of bread. The house of bread is the temple, the church, where we feed ourselves spiritually. Seeking first the kingdom of God and everything else will be added to us. Are you in the house of bread? Are you in the church? You are feeding yourselves. You are going to begin to fill yourself with all of the blessing that the Lord has prepared for you. The Lord is faithful. The Lord is faithful. The decision, like I repeat to you, is yours. You are either pleasant or you are bitter. And bitterness is so ugly, right? What do you feel when your mouth is bitter? Have you ever experimented that bitterness in your mouth? And what, what do you do when you feel that bitterness in your mouth? You're looking for something sweet, right? Something, because it's not pleasant to feel that bitterness in your mouth. But when you have your mouth full of sweetness, you even lick your finger <laughs> and you taste it and you taste that sweetness and sweeter than honey from the honeycomb is the word of the Lord. And so when that bitterness comes, when that bitter taste comes to your life, go and eat of the honey that drips from the honeycomb which is the word of God. And that is a secret because bitterness is going to peak. It's going to peak into your life and it's going to want to take your sweetness. You say, I want to be pleasant. I want to be the sweet one. I want to be the pleasant one. But bitterness, it's going to peak its ugly face and the problem is going to come. But run and make yourself sweet. Sweeten your heart with the word of the Lord. That is the remedy when those situations come. Naomi became happy when she came back to the house of bread, when she began to feed herself again with the word of the Lord. When we go far from the word of the Lord, then we become Maras. You know, when people are out there doing bad things, being violent, it's because they have that bitterness. The day that they know Christ, they are going to sweeten their lives with the word of the Lord. And so, you know, we get very violent and we become bitter and, and we become those Maras and, and we scream and we yell and, and 
you know, there's not a big difference in our character and that character of Mara, of bitterness. But the remedy is the word of the Lord. And going back to the house of bread. Lord, sometimes we blame you for our disgraces. Naomi said, the Almighty has afflicted me. But she did not see that it was because of her own decision of leaving the true and living God and going to the fields of Moab. God has nothing to do with that pain. It is our own decisions many times that put us in problems. And when death comes, it is not God who is the one guilty for death. We cannot accuse God of death. Death entered because of sin. He only gave His Son to deliver us from death. And from Him we've only received good. That is why we should worship you and glorify you at all times, Lord. Because even in the morning, even in death, you have given to us a promise of resurrection of life. Forgive our ingratitude. Forgive the complaining that comes out of our lips. Forgive the bitterness that we have possibly acquired or accumulated. But this morning or evening, whatever it may be, Jesus, we ask forgiveness from you. And we just want you to take that bitterness out, out of our hearts. We take that bitterness out and we fill ourselves with you, with the sweetness of your character. We fill ourselves with the sweetness of your words. We fill ourselves with all of the good things that you offer us to be able to be overcomers, Lord in this desert in which we sojourn through so that you will be glorified at all times forgive me if i have been a stumbling block to others maybe others have separated from us because of our bitterness but today we want to come near to you lord to bring them to you to the knowledge of your word in the name of jesus Lord, transform us, change our hearts into a pleasant heart, into a glad heart for you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we ask. Amen. You come. 
Come.